I think this is a good time to revisit the topic of feminism, since it's been coming up quite a lot. People seem to get the wrong idea about it, too. I did a good detailed introduction to this last year. I want to delve into this further and address recent events a little bit. There are three factions talking about this. There are two distinctively different types of feminists, and the third faction are the anti-feminists. Granted, a small minority of this nearly all-male group really do view women as inferior, but that is not what most of them think. On the contrary, most of them support women's rights and view them as equals. The problem is they have a lack of understanding about what feminism is. Sometimes it is to a small extent, sometimes to a very large one. One group of feminists are decidedly anti-male, if not man-haters. They have a very specific set of roles they think women must occupy, and these roles are contrary to the ones the patriarchal society of the past had for them. They frequently use the word rape to describe things they don't like, outside the actual definition of the word, and some may go so far as to say that all men are rapists. They usually feel female sexuality should be constrained in that a woman is debasing herself if she wants to do anything to please a man. Male sexuality is usually looked at as some sort of evil, and they are very against pornography and other sex work. Because of how vocal and extreme they are, and that their rhetoric states that they are the only feminists and anyone who deviates from their ideology is not a feminist, many of the anti-feminists think that all feminists are like that, and that their ideology is feminism. However, not all anti-feminists are under this misconception. Some of them misunderstand other issues, issues that are more subtle, not as clear-cut, and are much more complicated. This is aimed at the majority of anti-feminists, as well as the feminist faction I am part of. The small minority of true misogynists I have no interest in addressing, as their irrationality and sheer stupidity far exceeds my interest in engaging in masochistic conversations with the hopelessly brain-dead. I also feel the same way about the slut-shaming penis-haters and their fascist matriarchy. What I am going to be focusing on is third-wave or sex-positive feminism. It is most widely known as sex-positive, however, this nomenclature is misleading as it is a synecdoche. A synecdoche, in case you don't know, is a figure of speech where a whole is named for a part, or the other way around. Like referring to a car as wheels, for example, or calling an old TV the tube. Some sex-positive feminists do focus on sexuality issues, so it's easy to think that's everyone's focus. Some people might refer to the other feminists as sex-negative. Some people might feel they are in between these two things because they have a more moderate view on sexuality than other sex positives and or have less of a focus on sexuality and not understand that this issue is only part of sex-positive feminism. So, despite having more interest in this aspect or that, there is agreement, or close to it, on all the issues as a whole. Some sex-positive feminists may not talk about sexuality much at all, and likely don't care for the label, as it emphasizes a set of issues they may agree with but have no interest in. While others are focused on it quite a bit, like Lacey Green, who is very well known for educational videos on sexuality and relationships, or Divinity33327, whose main focus is on sex worker advocacy. I find all these things to be important issues. The next thing I want to explain is gender roles. 
it's quite a struggle to explain this in comments, and it invariably veers off into this tangent about biology before I am able to clarify exactly what I mean by that. I might say that I reject gender roles and they are irrational, but that statement isn't as inclusive as people think. Take something that is not only based in biology, but everything to do with it is biological. Differences in strength is one such thing. Men and women's sports are usually separated for this reason. There is nothing wrong with this because it is not a role being defined by a social construct, and it is purely biological. There can be an exception in a division of labor scenario if the man is disabled or the woman is a power lifter, but generally this goes by biology and there is nothing wrong with that. Next, we have things that are social constructs in full or in part. A lot of these things do have a biological aspect and that is alright. It's fine if these things end up following traditional roles. That isn't included in what I object to. In child rearing, men and women may each emphasize a different aspect of care. Men are more likely to put more emphasis on providing and protection, whereas women are more likely to emphasize nurturing. That is not always the case, though. It's just fine if people want to have a traditional role like this. That's their choice. That really doesn't enter into gender roles in the way I mean it. So again, biology and personal preferences and choices are absolutely nothing I am referring to, and I have no objection to that. In fact, I actually support that. What I object to is when it is made into an actual societal role where there is a societal expectation of following this role. This is where the person doesn't want to do this, but it has been forced on them by social stigma and other societal pressures. These sorts of things also lead to stereotyping. Society will have an idea of what man is and what woman is. They then teach this as some sort of objective truth, even though it is just a stereotype. Even if some of these things are more likely to be true, in many cases they are not true. Then you have this societal misconception about what a woman is, what a man is, and what they should do. Society also treats gender as binary, so if a man is a provider, a woman must need someone to provide. If a woman is sensitive, then a man must be tough. Obviously, gender isn't always binary, which is another sex-positive feminist issue, by the way. So. When we have roles of this nature, as I define them, we have these aspects of what is man and what is woman. In this way, society is defining what it is to be a man and what it is to be a woman. Maybe some of it is right and some of it isn't. However, when you define what these two types of people are in your society, what society's collective thoughts and actions are in this regard is shaped by these aforementioned societal definitions of man and woman, be they conscious or unconscious. These societal definitions are taken as a self-evident given. The people in this society will view everything about gender through this lens of false reality. These things will be taught and pushed on people as expected defaults. If you deviate much from this, societal pressures will be brought to bear. People may be completely shunned for certain behaviors that go against the societal norms which are based on this false reality. Women aren't as physically strong, and they are more sensitive, therefore less logical in our societal mind. So they must be patronized, and in some ways treated as inferior. There are other ideas about women as well, and this plays a big part in any remaining discrimination they face. Sometimes these things actually work to their advantage, at the same time, the disadvantage of men. Men are the providers and women must be provided for. Women nurture children and men provide. 
men also aren't very nurturing because that is what women are. So, my fellow men, do you now understand why in your no-fault divorce your wife got your house, custody of the kids, and some of your stuff while you didn't get to see your kids quite as often as her and have to pay hefty child support disproportionate to the child care costs and possibly alimony if you were wealthy? Put that way, I'm hoping it's clear that when you define things with generalized preconceived notions, you end up with this sort of systemic unfairness. I'm a very big male circumcision opponent. Granted, this practice still being around has a lot to do with it being a custom here. Female circumcision is usually more severe than the male form and never was a custom here. However, I can't help but think that the widespread repulsion of female circumcision and the widespread acceptance of the male version might have something to do with the differences in how sons and daughters are viewed. People think of boys as being tough and tend to be more protective of girls. So I can really see some preconceived notions about gender having an unconscious impact on this. Human sexuality can be like this. Women must contend with the Madonna-whore dichotomy. They start out pure somehow, and then through the course of the normal sexual behaviors that can be expected from a species with our evolutionary history, they become whore. Who defiled them? Men, of course, because men are obviously defiled. So, of course, men are always up to no good in this way. They are defilers, after all. It seems logical to want to keep men away from your daughter or sister because you must protect their purity and save them from the defilement of man. Never mind that your sister and daughter have a right to their own sex lives and get to make their own choices in life. If you want to go out with a woman, no doubt neither of you would be very happy if her brother or father started butting in. By the way, no what-ifing with ages here. Only derp and straw men will you find there. Not relevance. I'm a big supporter of men's rights in general. Discrimination men face is very much rooted in these preconceived gender stereotypes. These things are all addressed in feminism. So while it is called feminism because that is the focus, it has an impact on men at the same time. The aim of sex-positive feminism is equality. Women's rights come about by changing these societal gender roles or stereotypes. You can't change women's without changing men's at the same time or without shattering the binary view of gender. These things are all tied together as different aspects of our societal gender stereotypes. So that is why I reject these gender roles, which, as I mentioned previously, are not the same as any underlying biological differences. So ironically and counterintuitively, feminism is working on the very root issue that is the cause of what motivates both male and female discrimination. Many people who are into men's rights are not aware of this and don't want to even consider this idea because of it being tied in with feminism. That is, of course, made exponentially worse by radical feminists giving feminism a bad name. I'm hoping this provides good information and explanations, but does so as concisely as possible due to the general YouTube attention span. I also hope this bridges the gaps of ignorance and allows people to see that there is considerably more agreement than they once thought.